Same is true for all the characters in Sam and Max. They're not just the adventure equivalent of FPS cannon fodder. They vary with a sense of purpose and fit in nicely with the world and the overall story. There's the thug rat, Jimmy Two Teeth, who is most definitely not a quote unquote rat. The soda poppers, who are not a subtle spoof of child stars and teenage divas and heartthrobs. The talk show host Myra, who's an obvious shot at talk show hosts and in particular Oprah Winfrey. Hugh Bliss, who's a parody of the likes of Chopra, whatever the hell his name is, and other feel good spiritual leaders and self help advisors. In fact, the world of Sam and Max is one large parody of American pop culture with each of the characters representing a little niche and the things they do and the way you interact with them providing humor in that you're making fun of them and laughing at those who worship them. Sam and Max in a way represent our cynical side, the side that's sick of American pop culture that despises everything that's supposedly cool and hip and that those are other side which secretly likes all that shit. You could even say that Max's problem solving outlook that tend to be violent in nature is a reflection of our feelings. In other words, just as Max wants to violently pummel the soda poppers, we want to strangle Britney Spears. The parody is subtle and at the same time quite obviously laced into the overall story of a game. It's a testament to the quality of a parody that you hardly notice it while playing. Never do you see the jokes coming, never do you roll your eyes at the obvious, and never do you feel like that this is simply a parody. Rather, you feel like you're Sam and Max and that you're part of the world and you have all these interesting characters to interact with and all these jokes to listen to and laugh at and puzzles to solve and a plot to uncover and bring to its logical conclusion. Speaking of puzzles, no review of an adventure game is complete without mentioning its puzzles. In many adventure games, you often encounter pull your hair out and gouge your eyes and scratch yourself till you bleed type of frustrating puzzles with nonsensical solutions. And they mainly come from either the rules by which the game's world is governed not being entirely coherent or the game designers being simply mind-numbingly stupid. Thankfully, Sam and Max Season 1 is victim to neither. The puzzles in Sam and Max for the most part are top-notch. And the reason they're so good is because you can understand the world of Sam and Max. It is a cartoon world and many things that happen there would never happen in real life. But you can understand the world easily enough because the world is fully realized and the rules which govern the world are easy to figure out. More importantly, the game designers were smart to keep things as logical as possible. You won't encounter solutions to puzzles which require you to play MacGyver and assemble something out of 20 items that in no way should fit together to create any type of singular usable item, let alone that particular item that you're supposed to create. Nowhere will you be pixel hunting, and nowhere will you run into a dead end, and after five hours of trying various things, finally figure out that you are supposed to answer this guy that you met in the beginning of the game in this particular way, and since you didn't, you triggered a dead end, and now you have to load a previously saved game and do it all over again. The puzzles in Sam and Max Season 1 make sense to that cartoon world and are just challenging enough to make you scratch your head once or twice, but never leave you bald. The mark of a good game with good puzzles are those that leave you confused initially and cause you to try different things and by either luck or that light bulb finally turning on, allow you to stumble upon a solution and upon realizing the solution cause you to exclaim, oh that's what it was and then smack yourself on the forehead for not having realized it earlier. That's how logical and easy to understand they are in Sam and Max Season 1. There were one or two puzzles that did frustrate me personally, causing me to go to GameFAQ to find the solutions, and even upon finding out the solutions remain unsatisfied. But that just might be because I'm stupid and nonsensical, or because they were the sole exceptions to the overall excellent quality of the puzzles found in this game. As for graphics, this game is good looking enough. It's no Crisis or even Team Fortress 2, but it does have its own quality and it's something that can easily be appreciated by anyone, even Norwegian graphic horse. All the items are easily identifiable and have a coherent style that's very much Sam and Max. 
What I most enjoyed about the graphics is the character animation. They weren't the best I've seen, but they were good enough to generate lots of laughs. In particular, some of the reactions by Sam to bizarre events happening around him were hilarious. His look of horror is absolutely priceless. One gripe that some people may have with the graphics is that you can only set the resolution to 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 which may annoy some who want to play games at their monitor's native resolution, but I personally didn't mind since the game allows you to play in windowed mode. There also aren't any options for tweaking the visual setting beyond choosing either low or high setting, but I didn't find this to be a problem either since the game has really low system requirements, which should mean that most people will have no problem running this game on high setting. I can't speak intelligently about sound quality or anything else for that matter, but what I do know is that there were some musical numbers by some characters in Sam and Max, and one of them was the funniest song I've ever heard. Uh, yes, even funnier than the Portal song. The voice acting for all the characters are superb, with none of them standing out because it was simply excellent all around. One area of improvement over the original Hit the Road was Sam and Max's voice acting. They were great in Hit the Road, with Sam sounding exactly like a New York detective of yesteryear, and Max sounding like a New York uh, street punk. But I prefer the season one voices because they reflect the personalities of Sam and Max instead of the character's occupation and the New York setting. Sam sounds like he's a pretty laid back guy. Max sounds mischievous and a little crazy. You can pick up any of the episodes individually and you can play any of the episodes that you wish without having played the previous episodes. However, the best way to experience the game is to play each episode sequentially. Otherwise, you'll miss out on some of the jokes in the later episodes if you play them first. The later episodes often allude to something that happened earlier or there'll be a requisite knowledge of earlier events to truly appreciate the quality of the jokes. For example, Bosco's disguises are funny on their own. However, it's even funnier if you know who Bosco is and are expecting him to have some kind of disguise. So I would definitely recommend people to not try the demo, which is episode 4, in deciding whether or not to purchase the game, and instead trust the review of this total stranger and simply pick up the whole season and play them in sequential order. Each episode is quite good. Some episodes are substantially better than others. Episode 2 is, in my opinion, simply brilliant and the best of a lot. Episodes 4 and 5 are excellent as well. Episode 6 has some puzzles that I didn't like and felt were a bit nonsensical. And episode 3 was pretty disappointing in that the puzzles were a bit lackluster and the jokes not all that funny especially considering that the plot of this episode dealt with the toy mafia. All in all, I heartily recommend this game to anyone who's even remotely interested in playing computer games, and it's certainly a must-buy for those who are looking for an adventure game with an interesting story, great characters, challenging and logical puzzles, and tons of hysterically funny jokes.